I've got the low ass syndrome. Yeah. My sister and I are always like, thanks mom for the low ass. You know, <laughs> like it's just Welcome low. to Bus Mob TV. In the spirit of living our life with intention, me and Greta Nance found some time in our day to pause, grab some coffee, and chat about what's going on inside Bus Mob. We'll answer some questions, spend some time with a special guest, and share ways to be more intentional in your daily life. Hop on in. Hello. Hi again. Welcome to the car of intention. <laughs> it is. I know. Well, we used to call this the car of intention because we would go hide away from the office mm -hmm. back there, grab a cup of coffee or something, mm -hmm. and just take a moment to be intentional about where we're going in our lives. That's right. Pause for a hot sec. So this became the car of intention. That's right. We're Welcome. pausing. So yeah, thanks for coming. Um, we're going to talk about what's going on in Bus Mob that I think is really interesting booties yeah. <laughs> that ass that ass <laughs> um, <laughs> are we allowed to say that do we care no not really okay. if if it matters we'll be beep mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but yeah sometimes the topic of bbls come up brazilian yes. butt lifts butts are very in butts are very in yeah jenny is um actually very disgruntled about this topic just yeah. fyi i'm i'm here for it he because i have like a medium ass yeah but you're good you know, mine is like, I can't catch a crumb back there, but <laughs> I'm trying. We all have our things. So, but like, I love that the girls, like BBLs, Brazilian butt lifts is AKA fat grafting from one area of your body to another body part. The butt. If you don't have much weight on you anyway, you are not a candidate in general. Like, so just know, first of all, like you can't, I don't even know what the BMI cutoff is, but like you and I, neither of us would be candidates for a BBL. I tried. <laughs> so unfortunately we have to build muscle. That's right. And that was what was Not in the thread. Know. Like the, <laughs> the ladies were like, I'm, I'm interested in the BBL, blah, blah, blah. And like when someone goes into bus mob saying that like, Hey, I, I want bigger breasts. You know, there's no exercising that's going to like no, give you a lot I tried. Breast. I tried. But with it, with a butt, you know, there are exercises that yes. can, you can build a booty. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women were jumping in. They're like, Hey, maybe before you consider a BBL, try these exercises. Mm -hmm. And they were like 50 women, like do all of these things, like these weird lunges mm -hmm. and these, I don't know. I took some screenshots because mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to try this. Yes. But apparently there are lots of layers to muscles, mm -hmm. you know, unlike other body parts. So yeah, you can do some stranger feeling exercises <laughs> to actually build Build that booty. The butt. Yeah. I've got the low ass syndrome. Yeah. My sister and I are always like, thanks mom for the low ass. You know, <laughs> like it's just low. So I do want to get on that train. Mm -hmm. um, so it's funny that we talk about breast implants a lot, but butt implants are kind of a no, no. Yeah. So in case right you were like, okay, I'm too thin for BBL. I don't want to work out. I'll get <laughs> butt implants. Very different. Think about the issues when we talk about even being here. Can you imagine sitting hard on these oh, guys all day long? No. They look unnatural. The displacement mm -hmm. and flipping is super high. The, the risk of infection is, is high. Yeah. So we're not a butt we don't implant do that fan. Much. We're breast at implant all. fans. Yeah, no. So you're no. going to get a butt? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, I'm excited to see. It's been two months. I've done two exercises. So things are going great. It's going slow. Uh, <laughs> But I have an idea of what I want to do. I bought the bands. You uh -huh. know, I saw you had some of those. Yes, I have. So I've I have, used them a few times. It's like some light, medium, and heavy mm -hmm. bands. So I've been using those. Mm -hmm. Hip thrusts out of the question because mm -hmm. I don't have a gym and I'm not going to buy a barbell. But mm -hmm. there are ways to do it at home that I am going to do. And just stay tuned. And I'm going to have a tiny butt by December. Yeah. I just love that Bus Mob, first of all, it's okay to post whatever you want to post mm -hmm. in a way. You know you're going to get like positive feedback and true like help. Mm -hmm. I've tried this. I've tried this. Here's my link to this. You should try this. Like it is so fun because yeah. just like implants or whatever surgery we're talking about, to me getting a butt is just about proportion. Yeah. You know, too. I just want my body to be fairly symmetrical. Mm -hmm. So if you've got big boobs and no butt, um, it's not that you're like an ass girl. You just want to look proportionate. Yeah. Me too. I just want mine to look higher. I just want to sit and not feel my bones. Yeah, yeah. You, my husband has less booty than you do, Ooh, and he painful. does complain often about just sitting in yeah. general. It I'm hurts. like, I have no problem sitting. Sitting is, <laughs> sitting is fine. I need like a, a butt pad to yeah. sit on. Well, that was a hot topic. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Thank you, ladies, for weighing yeah. in on your butt suggestions. That's right. We get a lot out of it too. A lot of butt stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got. Well, I've. I hate that this question has to be asked in a way. So 
What is well, it? You didn't know. <laughs> I don't remember the question. I'm Jenny, like, we have it? like a script, but Jenny doesn't look at it. So it's really fun it's, that everything is a surprise for you. You know, I wrote it and I don't remember. It. Okay, well, good. <laughs> well, listen to this question okay. from the group. I booked my consultation, but I'm not sure if I should bring my significant other or not. Any advice? Yes. Well, like she asked this too, and I wanted to be like, do you not want him to come? Mm -hmm. Do you want him to come? So yes. there was a lot of layers here. Because I but, saw a thread in yes, Westmont with yes, that question, yes. which prompted me to be like, this would be a good one to yes, talk about. It would. So share your thoughts. So my thoughts are, regardless if they're, let's say they're really into it or mm -hmm. he or she, whomever you're with, like they're team boobs, team whatever, like they should come, mm -hmm. you know? That's easy peasy. But I think where the flip side is, is if you might have an unsupportive partner, mm -hmm. should you bring them? Mm -hmm. And my personal opinion is yes, because a lot of times they might have concerns about the surgery or they might have concerns about your safety. Um, and not so much like the aesthetics of it, but just like your personal health. And mm -hmm. so having them come and be able to have the opportunity to sit down and ask those questions to a surgeon might actually benefit you in the long run because they have the opportunity to hear, like get their voice heard. Mm -hmm. And then you can understand maybe like why they're on the fence to begin with. And then mm -hmm. when you leave the consult, maybe you guys finally are aligned because they feel heard and they're, I don't know, whatever they're worried about is squashed. Well said, well said. I didn't know, so I have many thoughts. Mm -hmm. Similar though, like it just depends on the health of the relationship and the mm -hmm. communication. And like as the patient care coordinator for 10 years, 70% yeah. of the couples that came in, everything, it, I used to say partners or spouses can barely win. Mm -hmm. If you're too excited, that's a red flag. If you're not excited oh, enough, yeah, yeah, it's a red flag. So like, I used to just so be excited? almost feel sorry for them yeah. sitting. Mm -hmm. quiet like <laughs> you don't want to be too engaged or too not engaged You're like yeah babe go bigger yeah so that would be the outlier on one end you better get your money's worth and i'd be like ugh. or the like you should not do this i can't believe you're doing this like it it's just it can ugh. be difficult yeah to navigate so mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. If you want them there, first of all, the surgeon should always invite them in, mm -hmm. answer their questions, treat it like a family decision. Mm -hmm. Like it, I have heard of surgeons not wanting a partner there and I mm -hmm. do not like that. I think no. that's like a red flag, Yeah, but it can be funny, mm -hmm. you know, like it can, it's just know it's probably very hard for them, mm -hmm. the partners too, to know how to support you. They want you to know they love you exactly the way you are, mm -hmm. you that know, nice. like, so that's hard for them to go. I want you to know you don't have to do this, mm -hmm. but I'm here for you if you want to. But I don't know. It, it's just complicated. It is. So it's complicated. That's why bus mom <clears throat> are your other support system. Yeah, those are your Just girls. in case your partners or your friends or your family aren't meeting those needs. Mm -hmm. It is complicated for people to know exactly how to support you through this. And I had no idea when I had my consult at Amelia with Dr. Pyle. I, I didn't know if I should bring my husband mm -hmm. and he said, it's always nice to have a second set of ears mm -hmm. because if I miss I something, the other person will might hear something you missed. And mm -hmm. so I was like, Oh, that makes a lot of sense too. Mm -hmm. Whether he was on board or not, which he was, um, at least he would leave with the information that I may have missed. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I, so my husband had surgery last year. Yes. Last year. And I did not go to his consultation because I wanted him to be able to ask the questions mm -hmm and be as vulnerable or not. I don't know. I felt the need in that mm. one to step away and be like, I will absolutely be there if you'd like me to, mm -hmm. but I actually think you would feel more comfortable if I wasn't there. Mm. So I don't know whether that's just a man woman kind of thing. I think but... it is because my ex-husband had surgery last year and yeah. I did not go to his consult. Yeah. I wanted like him to not feel dumb asking yeah. the questions at the same time that I probably already mm -hmm. knew the answer to and him just being able to be vulnerable with a doctor. I like that. Men are weird. Men are weird. <laughs> We're not talking about them. We're no, about no. Women. God, that would be a whole episode. <laughs> I say out loud to myself, men are so weird at least once a day. Maybe because I have boys too, but just so strange. Yeah. And it gave me the prettiest flowers for Valentine's Day. And like a couple hours later, I went back to look at them again. And I realized like they were in this beautiful vase with no water. <laughs> like literally just dry. Just like drop and the like, flowers in. I just went, men are so weird like what a weird decision like you did so good they'll die tomorrow but here then, they are. Yeah, so i'm like putting water in them anyway men are weird but you know some of most of them are pretty good Good job nick i said some of them most of them are pretty good um okay another great question okay I'm, yeah i feel like this is also 
something I hear a lot in mm -hmm. the skincare group. No, I remember this one. I My kids currently are asking me about it. Oh, Speaking bet. of men, I think men ask this question a lot, mm -hmm. but I don't know. We've all gone down. Basically, anyone who turns 12 years old or over has experienced some frustration in their life with blackheads. Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about for a Fun hot second. Topic. And, and like, I was of the generation of like Biore Pore Perfect well, strips well, yes, or whatever. Do you remember off? those? Yes. I'm pretty sure they're terrible for you. Oh, from I From what it. I understand now. But like, I thought that was the only way that I you got rid of those. them. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm 90% sure they actually were, did more harm than good. Oh shit. Well, yeah. Mind. Yeah. So I like, I'm lucky that someone asked this question. <laughs> yes. Me then too. Then we called in an expert and we have many things to say. I get really bad blackheads, and I have no idea how to get rid of them. Any suggestions? Pick them out. I know. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> I'm just I know, kidding. and it's funny. It's I am like anti-squeezer for pimples. But when you see a but blackhead. But I am a squeezer for blackheads. But I've learned to do it more in the right way. Yeah. I'm just kidding. And yeah, so <laughs> someone asked this. It's something we hear a lot about. Mm -hmm. My kids have been frustrated mm -hmm. with this for themselves right now. So Jesse interviewed Chelsea mm -hmm. and got to ask her some questions. And let me, let's watch that first and then we'll talk product. What's your treatment for treating blackheads? Hydrofacial. So with the hydrofacial, we're using um, a Vortex technology to really suck out and clean out the pores on the nose, chin, and forehead. Jenny just said, I don't think I've ever had a blackhead. Well, I haven't <laughs> grown hairs though, so it's a trade-off. You just dispelled <laughs> my whole statement of anyone over 12 has experienced this, except for Jenny. Sorry. Apparently. Yeah, I had acne though. Does that count? You were just like, tell me what a blackhead is. Yeah. And to me, it's just, it's mainly here, here, and here. But I don't know. I can get them up mm. here a little bit as well. It's, it's a pore. Yeah with oil and dirt in them. Mm. But then it almost gets a film over it. So like what Chelsea was saying about like hydrofacials are a great treatment for mm. them because it's exfoliating. Mm -hmm. But there are some products you can use at home, kind of anything with glycolic acid mm. or an exfoliator. Mm -hmm. Glyco uh, SkinCeuticals has a great product that I've got my kids using right now, just on like mm. my teenagers, just on the tip of their nose to help get that off. Mm. That's the SkinCeuticals. It's called Glycolic 10. I, I love that. that. Yeah, it's mm. good. The silver stuff. Like once a week, I'll do it. So it's good. They also use, oh, cute little mm, thing fell in my car. Um, I'm not a wipe girl. Like we're I'm not going to do makeup wipes. We're, we've already talked about that. But these <laughs> acne cleansing wipes, oh. I also gave my kids because again, it's got like a glycolic acid mm -hmm. in them. So they just use it right here to again, help keep that stuff out of there mm. because if you leave a blackhead too long you will have like a little scar see mine one scar that one little dot mm -hmm. <laughs> i know it was a blackhead that i never got rid of and now it's forever oh so it's like you had a piercing i know that's a cute piercing those are like monroe's oh my god no it's okay it's not that deep <laughs> it's, it's permanent and actually people have asked before once you get like an open pore that's forever can you get it cut out and you what? can get it cut out but then you'll have a scar. Jenny's immediately investigating <laughs> the face. Oh, you can see it right there. I don't know that I look that hard. Yeah. So if know. you leave like a blackhead too long hmm. and you don't get the stuff out, you can keep an open pore the rest of your so life. So don't do that. No. Hydrofacials, exfoliating products, things that have glycolic acid. These were two good options. What about the uh, but no, it's also very normal. The Neocutis um, exfoliating cleanser because doesn't have that yes, glycolic yes. acid in it. Yes, use a glycolic cleanser okay. like that as well. That's a good one. And if you even put that on and you leave it on for a couple minutes mm -hmm. and then you wipe it off, you almost got like a little mini peel. Mm. So I like that as a tip too. Tip Tuesday. Tip Tuesday. So Thursday? keep on those blackheads. Know they're normal. Don't squeeze them too much. You got to get the stuff off. Get first, the film off. and then you can have extractions done comfortably. Mm, sounds wonderful. Extractions. What a terrible word. <laughs> what do we want to talk about? Um, well, it's more set. Hmm. Um, the Wheel of Life topic that mm -hmm. we covered this week, which mm -hmm. was Valentine's Day. Because it was Valentine's Day. Hashtag romance, mm -hmm. which doesn't come easy to us, which nope. was actually surprising to me that it didn't come easy to you. Nope. And it made me feel better because, I don't know. I found someone else that was in my lane. <laughs> yeah. I bet more people than not. Because to me, it it's not that it doesn't come natural. It's that I'm not vulnerable enough usually to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've all had enough middle school trauma 
I swear <laughs> I can bring it back to that where it's like you put yourself out there. Do you remember when three people would hop on a phone call, but you didn't know that the one yeah, person oh, was on that there? Was mean. Yes. I like hated we that. all have ruined romance because it's there's like no the way thing. I'm going to put myself <laughs> out there. Cause you got shamed mm -hmm. for like having a crush on someone who didn't have a crush back on you. Oh, like so this. now I definitely have baggage mm -hmm. of like, if I'm too sweet, and he doesn't reciprocate, then I'm embarrassed. Yes, that's that's the root of it, is embarrassment. Yes. Putting yourself out there and then it being like, feeling weird, and then you feel weird, and it's like, why would I do this again? Yeah. Like, if I'm if I'm gonna feel weird, nobody wants to feel awkward when they try to do something sweet. Like, yes. it's, I don't know. But anyways, Valentine's Day was a whole new perspective for me anyways, mm -hmm. because this is my first Valentine's Day with a boyfriend. Mm -hmm not my ex-husband so that was fun and i like how greta told me she was like so you have to set the bar for yeah. kind of like what you want it to be like yes. for the next one and the next one very important and i'm like that's pretty much new like true in any new relationship mm -hmm. like i can't go in with the same kind of expectations or what i was used to with my previous relationship because mm -hmm. one it's a different person two mm -hmm. it's not fair and three everybody's different mm -hmm. so i had to really keep an open mind with this valentine's day Put myself out there because you challenged me on Monday, mm -hmm. and I did. I wore a dress, which is me. Did you get him a card? There. I got him a card. Yeah. There you go. Jenny was going to the like date with nothing, and I'm like, he told me not that. to. I know, but you can't listen. And you, I yeah. didn't. Good. I'm so glad. I'm so proud of you. So I got him a bunch of little things, mm -hmm. but like in my previous relationship, he would have been like, "Did you say the receipt?" <laughs> so yeah. this time, when he was opening it, I'm like, "Oh God." God, he's gonna hate it and he loved everything he yeah. thought my card was funny and he gave me a hug and yeah. I was like people are so different you yeah. know and like there was nothing wrong with the, my first husband there's nothing wrong with my boyfriend it's yeah. just that people are so different I can't expect the same response or reaction no and I just romance is important even though it's not comfortable for mm -hmm. us like the flip side is do you want to be partnered with your roommate the rest of your right. life maybe you do and that's a whole, that's not the romance conversation nope. then. Like <laughs> I would like the intimacy mm -hmm. and the vulnerability. I need to constantly lean into that. And yeah, my first marriage, I would always be like, you don't have to get me anything. You don't have to get me anything. And so we didn't. And later I always like, was like, fuck, <laughs> am I not worth getting something for? But I told him not to. Yeah. And so now I'm very, it's, I still, my natural reaction is don't get me anything. Yeah. Don't spend too much. Don't put effort out for me but I want the effort. Mm -hmm. So I've really had to start as I want to go on yeah. and make this different of me putting myself out there, mm -hmm. him putting himself. So I don't know. Date nights have made that a lot easier mm -hmm. because you know, we talk about, we own a date night and then we alternate. And so it's not a mutual, where do you want to go tonight, babe? Where do you, I don't know. What do you feel like? Mm -hmm. what, that's like, that is a lot more casual. This, I'm going to take you on a date. I'm not maybe going to tell you what it is. I'm going to make the decision when it's mine. And it mm -hmm. was on Valentine's day. I pay, I drive, I like tell him the plan. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Like I highly recommend doing that at least that. here or there instead of a constant mutual thing, mm -hmm. because then nobody has to put out any skin in the game. Mm -hmm. So Ooh. yeah, I took him to a questionable restaurant and it, well, <laughs> wasn't my favorite Mr. meal, <laughs> but uh, it was not my favorite meal. Well, um, it was Italian, but it was, I don't know. It was like super cheesy, like, like for Valentine's like there Day. there was cheese or it was no, cheesy? No, it was like, they tried to make it like, they brought out like heart shaped shrimp and Aww. things like that. But it was like, I don't know. But again, much. was it like overboard? It was overboard. <laughs> it was. They painted in, the tails red. It was red. not classy, <laughs> <laughs> but we had fun and we laughed. And then we went to watch the Super Bowl because it was on the same day. And oh, it was fun. Like, but he was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And that's now cool. I'm already excited about our date night coming up. I don't have to make a decision. I don't have to check if they're open or make reservations mm -hmm. or he's going to take me. I can drink a little more because he's going to drive. <laughs> he's going to pay. It's a really fun exercise of being a little vulnerable, mm -hmm. putting yourself out there. And it definitely helps us with the romance. Yeah, it definitely pays off. Mm -hmm. And I like how questions, mm -hmm. like when you're on a date. Just, oh, I have some great apps. Oh, I can't wait to get them from you because I mm -hmm. have zero. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be really helpful for me and putting myself out there more and getting to really know someone at a deeper level mm -hmm. than just, hey, you want to go get sushi? Yeah. I w so this is tangenting, but I'm listening to this great podcast right now from the Gottman Institute, the couple. I'm, if you've not heard about them, they're probably the most famous relationship researchers oh. 
they swear they have a test that can predict with 90% accuracy if you will get a divorce. <gasps> Like they've studied over 30 years, this couple has studied tens of thousands of people and interviewed them. And, and like, basically they're giving their top level findings. Like couples who do this have a much higher chance of staying together than couples who don't. And I, I'm happy to link the podcast yes, too, yes, yes, but yes. specifically they were like, we stop asking questions usually after the first year to the other person. Mm -hmm. Like at first you've never heard these mm -hmm. stories. You have no idea where, why did you move there? Where'd you go to college? But then into your relationship, you stop asking you just start talking about the tactical day-to-day -day things. Mm -hmm. And it's day? like one of the most important indicators whether a couple will make it is if they purposely still ask how each other, like ask those deep questions. And so I didn't realize how powerful we try to do that, but then I'll forget and we'll just talk about the Super Bowl or something mm -hmm. else. But when I purposely go, what was your most embarrassing childhood memory? It'll turn into like a 45 minute mm -hmm. date night conversation. And then I get to share. And I don't know, you feel connected and heard mm. by that person instead of next time someone starts paying interest in you, you know, that's dangerous. You need to get that from your person. Yeah. So like I've got some great free apps that ask amazing questions. Send it to me. I will. It's going to be great. It's going to be great about booties and blackheads in Valentine's Day. That, I was hoping to something to start with a B. We talked about booties in Boss Mob. Mm -hmm. We talked about blackheads in the skincare group. Right. Great products. I mm -hmm. love, I'm going to grab some before I leave today to take home to my children nice. again. And yeah, we talked about Valentine's Day and romance on Brunch mm -hmm. Club. So if you want to check out any of those tips or watch the old replays uh -huh. of this That's week, right. you can always go to Instagram's Bus Mob account mm -hmm. and they all live there. That's so right. hopefully that will make your life better. So let's all be vulnerable, put ourselves out there and see what happens. Yep. YOLO. Yeah, yeah, so YOLO. I, like, I know everyone makes fun of that expression. It's probably like yeah. my, the one that describes me the yeah. best. Like you only live once. That's let's right. give it a shot. One life. We better get back to work before we get back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. To join Bus Mob, shop for swag, or follow me and Greta on social, click the links below. See you next time.